What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and stimulus check update. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. I will keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. Also, thanks so much for hitting the like button for us down below. It really helps out our YouTube channel. In this video, uh, Senator Joe Manchin and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer have come to an agreement on the next stimulus package. I'll give you the details on that in this video. Let's jump right in. Okay, first up, new details coming out here today. Today on, uh, as you can see here, report Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and uh, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia agree on a reconciliation bill or at least some details of it. Yeah, multiple different uh, details here coming out here. Uh, reconciliation move, Schumer submits some text of this to the Senate parliamentarian here uh, today. Today, we'll be submitting some text here today. Yeah, with Manchin's backing, Senate Democrats unveil plan to let Medicare negotiate prescription drug pricing. This bill, if enacted, would finally rein in big pharma's price gouging and make medicines more affordable for millions of Americans. Yeah, to lower prescription drug pricing now. This would be a huge thing because it would lower the cost of prescription drug pricing for millions of Americans and could ultimately lower the cost of health care and premiums for maybe everybody here in the United States because prescription drug pricing or prescription drug costs uh, is one of the factors that ultimately drives up the cost of health care. And one of the prime examples of this was um, the cost of Medicare and Medicare Part B. Um, the Medicare Part B cost went up about $21 last year, uh, $21.50 or something like that last year. Well, uh, the about half of that cost last year was due to one prescription drug cost last year uh, by the name of Alduhelm, which was an Alzheimer's drug. And the cost of that was $56,000 that everybody had to pay for who pays for Medicare Part B, even if you don't take it, because everybody has to pay for all the prescription drugs it's you know it's a system that you know everybody pays into and um this is this is the problem here is that uh, if you're paying for health care um you're basically paying for it, it's almost like a group health system right you know it's even if you're not taking prescription drugs you're kind of paying into the system you're kind of paying into the system uh, and that is that is one of the problems here, that even if you're not taking a, pres a particular prescription. So basically, if they can lower the cost of prescription drugs and prescription drug prices, it would ultimately lower the cost for everybody directly through the prescriptions that you take and the prescriptions you pay for, your deductibles, and your premiums um, ultimately, because a lot of the premiums, the monthly cost that you pay, uh, not just for prescription, but the, the monthly cost that you pay for healthcare and for Medicare. And even if you're not on Medicare, if you're just on you know, private health insurance, or regular health insurance, or through your, through your employer uh, health insurance, a lot of that cost is the prescriptions that you pay for, okay? Because that's built into the cost, and and they know it. Okay, uh, just think about that that twenty one dollar per per year increase that was just for this one year. Think about all the past years increases that went up. Uh, Fifty percent of that was just from one prescription drug. So this is a major major thing. Um, this is this is a lot of this has to do with. This would be significant. 
very significant. So you can see here, Schumer and Manchin agree on reconciliation bill. Priming the parliamentarian, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will submit tax today to the Senate parliamentarian on a 50 Democrat, 50 Democrat agreement. Yes, that includes Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat from West Virginia. So even though they're on a short recess here this week, it doesn't matter. Okay, that just that it really doesn't even matter because you could, as you could see here, they're still doing work. Recess means that just some of them went back to their states to work in their states. Okay, um, as you can see here, they're literally still doing this stuff here. They're submitting this text here today. That's why some people get all worked up about, oh, they went on July 4th recess, which really means they went back to their states to work and, you know, they took the actual July 4th holiday off. I, I don't get all worked up about that like like some people do. And, and some people say, how can you even report on anything when they're on recess? Well, this literally shows you that they're still doing stuff, okay? Um, they're submitting major legislative text here today on the reconciliation bill. And uh, just because recess does not mean they're not working. So whenever you hear that, just disregard it. When you hear recess, most of the senators and congressmen, they're going back to their states to work, okay? Because if, if you're a, a representative from Ohio or California or Texas, uh, you can't always work in Washington. You have to work in your state sometimes, too, because if you're from Texas, you can't never be in Texas. You have to work in Texas sometimes, too. You can't you can't spend 365 days a year in Washington and never be in your state. OK, um, but at any instant, if they have to vote, um, they can go back to Washington, D.C. within hours, okay? Uh, in fact, the House of Representatives can actually vote remotely. They don't even need to fly back. Uh, I really think the Senate should pass a vote for that, but the Senate is stubborn. <laughs> uh, so the House doesn't even need to fly back. They can literally just jump on Zoom and vote remotely. So whenever you hear recess, it don't even it's not even anything to be concerned about because they're, they're still working on the stuff whenever they need to. Yeah, so the Senate parliamentarian, they have agreed on a 50 Democrat agreement, including Senator Joe Manchin, to allow the federal government to negotiate prescription drug costs for Medicare, according to two sources familiar. That will kick off the so-called bird bath, uh, named after a, uh, a former senator named Byrd, B-Y-R-D where the parliamentarian reviews the proposed text to make sure it abides by the Senate reconciliation rules. Um, one of the main rules is that it will affect the government's budget. That's one of the main rules it has to do. The bath is supposed to purge extraneous provisions that don't align with the reconciliation instructions. This would mean that they have they, they can pass it with only 50 votes and no Republican votes. Because honestly, there's not going to be any Republicans that vote for this large reconciliation package. Even though there's some Republicans that support um, lowering prescription drug pricing, there's actually a bipartisan bill uh, for lowering prescription drug pricing. There's actually a standalone bill for this. I don't know if they if they if it could pass standalone. But there is a recent bill here just within the last few days uh, that was just introduced. It hasn't gone anywhere yet. It hasn't been voted on yet, but it was just introduced. Uh, there's some Republican backing on it. Um, but there's almost, I'll say, a 99.9% .9 chance that uh, <laughs> there won't get any Republican votes on the Build Back Better package or whatever it's going to be called ultimately, because it's going to be bundled with a whole bunch of Democratic priorities, and there probably won't be any Republicans that vote for it because of that. There's a few things that Republicans agree on, or some Republicans agree on, like this. Some Republicans, not all Republicans, some Republicans, um, but ultimately there probably won't be any Republicans that vote yes on it because 
Uh, it's a bunch of different Democratic priorities combined, and that's why there won't be any Republican votes on it. But as you can see here, prescription drug pricing negotiation is just one piece of the puzzle. Just one piece of the puzzle. It'll be just one piece of this Build Back Better legislation or whatever. There might be a new name for it. OK, there could be a new name for it. But for now, we're just calling it Build Back Better. Um, but this would lower the cost of health care and prescription drug pricing for probably over 100 million Americans. The rest of the party line package is still in flux and isn't ready for the birdbath or the reconciliation, uh, having the parliamentarian go over it. Schumer and Manchin have been meeting regularly about what it might make, what might make it into the bill, uh, about tax reform, potential tax rebates. Um, it could be called stimulus checks and climate provisions. But this move does show serious commitment about moving the bill forward on a new reconciliation bill. And just coming out here today as well, the number one reason another stimulus check could be on the table is because of recession. And many economists think that recession is already here and they can pass it in this package as well. Remember that the third stimulus package passed only by the Democrats last year with Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer and Senator Kirsten Sinema, the $1,400 stimulus checks. It also include um, the rent assistance, the mortgage assistance, the utility assistance, and the child tax credits that were passed for one year. Um, all that was included, they all said yes on it, and it seems like they're working towards this next package. Well, you can see here, this is the number one reason why another check could be on the table here. This just came out here today. A fourth payment could come under some circumstances. A fourth check is more likely if the country enters into a recession, which a lot of people and economists think that we're already in. We're already in. During the heart of the pandemic, federal lawmakers provided three stimulus checks to Americans across the United States. But we haven't seen a check since March of last year. Lawmakers have been focused on a bunch of priorities, but widespread support for another payment, well, there has been a lot of support. We have a petition for $2,000 per month stimulus checks with over 3 million signatures. 3 million signatures. Um, so there is a lot of support for this. And, uh, I think uh, especially now with inflation, as you'll see here, um, a lot of people saying we need a lot of help right now with inflation at a 40 year high. Yeah. And as you can see here with this new, uh, new data, the new article that just came out here today, why a recession could mean more stimulus money becomes available here. If the U S were to fall into a recession, which some people think we're already in, including the top economists. This could mean this could result in lawmakers providing another stimulus payment. That's right. There's a simple reason why a recession would make another stimulus payment more likely. Stimulus checks have been used in the past to respond to this type of economic downturn. And not from this last recession, but in the past as well. In 2001, for example, the Bush administration took action in light of the recession that was ongoing at the time by providing $300 stimulus checks for adult tax filers. And remember back then, $300 stimulus checks, I mean, nowadays that would be worth double at least, you know, just because of inflation. And in 2008, another recession occurred during the financial price, uh, crisis, and President George W. Bush signed a bill into law that provided $600 for most individual taxpayers and $1,200 for married joint filers, which included uh, incomes below a certain threshold. The 2008 stimulus also included a $300 per child tax credit. So as you can see here, there's been multiple stimulus checks in the past as well. In 2001, $300 stimulus checks. 
in 2008, $600 stimulus checks and $1,200 stimulus checks for married filing jointly. And 2008 stimulus checks, $300 per child tax credits. All this because of recessions in the past. Yeah, so think about that. With ample precedent for providing stimulus payments during difficult economic times, lawmakers would likely feel a lot of pressure to act if the country once again falls on hard times. Yeah, think about that. Will a recession occur? It's difficult to predict if a recession will happen or not, but some experts believe that one is likely to occur as a result of supply chain issues, high levels of inflation, and the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, which they're expected to do again here this month, a triple interest rate hike of 0.75% and the ongoing wars in Ukraine and a host of other factors. But no one can say for certain if or when a recession will hit for the U.S. or if it's already happening. Yeah, so, and you got to really kind of think here, so many people getting hit hard from inflation. You really got to think here that as we were trying to come out of this pandemic, so many small businesses just folded, just went out of business. Millions of people just lost their jobs completely. Just the, the jobs were just gone. And people had to find new jobs and completely start over where many people couldn't find jobs that were uh, equivalent to the pay that they had before and had to take lower paying jobs, which is with inflation going up right now, which was a terrible thing because think about it, inflation is going up and millions of people lost their jobs because of the pandemic. There was close to at one point, 40% of all small businesses went out of business. So think about that. 40% of all small businesses went out of business. So all those millions and millions of people had to find new jobs and think about how many of them couldn't find jobs that paid the same amount or higher, they had to find jobs that paid lower, okay? And now with inflation just ravaging, that's that's a really, that's a double hit because they had time where they were potentially making less, you know, unemployment, and uh, now unemployment bonuses have been long gone. So unemployment typically pays 50% of your paycheck, depending on the state. So they're losing money and then they had to find a new job and their new job may be paying less. And if their job is paying less, inflation is really hot right now. So they're, they're double losing. They're double losing. So, so just think about that. Think about how many people are in, in that situation or, or even medium sized businesses, large businesses that laid off and, and just cut workforces to to deal with, you know, what was going on. Think about the travel sector, how many employees they cut off. Yeah, the airlines um, cut cut down their workforce, and now, uh, now they can't keep up with supply because or demand, I should say, because, you know, now everybody's, you know, saying, hey, we want to travel. We've been cooped up. We've had cabin fever forever. And uh, they had to cancel. Over 15,000 flights were delayed just by Friday alone. I haven't seen recent statistics uh, since then. I just haven't come across an article. Um, but by Friday of July 4th weekend, 15,000 flights were delayed because they just don't have enough employees working there. So, I mean, think about that. There was something like 2.5 million people had uh, gone through the gates of traveling by Friday alone. So they're expecting like 10 million people or more to travel just going out. And then they got to come back. You know, I mean, of course, you know, they're, they're not one way travelers, at least most of them. Right. I mean, maybe some of them are. But uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is this is kind of the, the the problems going on here right now, and inflation's just making it worse. And you can see here in the past, the this is not the first round of stimulus checks. A lot of people kind of forget those old ones in the past, um, but this is a new tool that the government has learned really helps people kind of temporarily get by. And the child tax credits are another one. Those have been around for like twenty three or twenty four years. 
but the new monthly payment system really helps out a lot of people. But of course, they've been stuck here uh, for this half this year now. They haven't been able to pass it. But maybe with this new version of Build Back Better, they'll be able to get it going again. Get it going again. Because the monthly payments really help out a lot of people. And it provided it for people who were non-tax filers. That's a big thing because we all know a lot of people don't file taxes and um, it provided those checks to millions of people who may have not got the child tax credits before. They were eligible for them, but they didn't file. They didn't file. And remember, the IRS urges you to, if, if you got the child tax credits last year for that half year, you're still owed money for the other half of the year, but you have to file your taxes. So even if you're not a tax filer, I urge you to just go ahead and file. You can literally file your taxes for free. In fact, I have a website here for you. Yeah, it's getyourrefund.org. Getyourrefund.org. It's an official government website. Claim your credits easily with our support. Free tax filing for households that qualify. Get your child tax credits here. Because remember that you can also claim missing stimulus checks. If you're missing stimulus check number three, they're not going to send it to you now. You have to get it by by claiming it on a tax return. It is line 30, I believe. Uh, yeah, so you can see here, this is, this is not the child tax credits, but if you're missing stimulus check one, two, or three, you get it by, by claiming it on a tax return on line 30. If it's stimulus check number three, it's a 2021 tax return. If you're missing stimulus check one or two underneath former President Donald Trump, that's a 2020 tax return. If you've already filed those tax returns, you can always file an amended tax return. But if you're missing your child tax credits from last year, um, that you can file a 2021 tax return. Okay, And if you haven't done that yet, you can do it for free at getyourrefund.org. Uh, it's free for most people. I don't know. You know, I haven't used this this website, but basically, this website is going to file a tax return. All services are free to households that qualify. So again, I don't know how, how this works, but this is a government website. Um, but remember that you you didn't get the child tax credits for half the year because the other payments were for the payments were only for half the year, July through December. So you're still owed the payments for January through June which is $1,500 to $1,800 per child. So if you don't file a tax return, you won't get that money. So the IRS urges you to file a tax return just to get that money. Even if you don't normally file and you have children, you want to file. I'm trying to help out as many people as possible. Surely I don't work for the IRS. So trust me, I have no, it's not like the IRS is getting anything out of this. They're giving you money. They're giving you money. So I'm trying to help out as many people as I can because. You can file for free, and then you're going to get thousands of dollars. So I don't want people to miss out on this money. So if you have children or if you're missing a stimulus check, the only way to get that money is to file. There you go. So that's my good deed for the day. I'm here to help as many people as possible. If you know anybody that that pertains to, share this video with them. There's a share button down below. Uh, you can just literally sh click the share button. It'll copy the link. You could send it to them over email, over messenger, on Facebook, anything like that. Um, I'm trying to help out as many people as possible in, in as many ways as possible uh, by sharing information, everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. Uh, so also click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. I don't charge anything for anything ever, uh, pretty much. So yeah, I will keep you up to date here on a daily basis. And also, if you see any phone numbers in the comment section claiming to be me, it's not me. I don't have any phone numbers to call ever. They're people pretending to be me. So Keep that in mind. Don't ever call any phone numbers from the comment section. Uh, so make sure to subscribe down below. Just click the subscribe button. It's free. And this way you won't miss out on new videos. Then click the bell icon to get notifications when we go live. I will keep you up to date here with new videos that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click here to see my newest video on stimulus checks that are going out here some as early as this week in some states. So click on that video next, 
Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.